Hello and welcome to this third video in the series FileMaker and Graph Databases. My name is Joris Aerts from Clickworks. We are a FileMaker Platinum partner based in Antwerp, Belgium. Find the examples on our website clickworks.eu. Follow us on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. Now, this is video number three and I'd like to show you how to update a graph from FileMaker. So, there are two other videos, one where I explain uh, what a graph database is and show you some basic uh, cipher queries in a graph. Uh, then the previous video uh, where I demonstrate how to export data from FindMaker and load it uh, in a brand new graph. And I use a uh, personal database for an example. And now in this video I'd like to show you how to create some interaction between FindMaker uh, and the graph database. So. Just to show you our starting point, I have a, a personal database in FileMaker with 580 people. Um, people report to managers, so there is a foreign key reports to that refers to uh, a manager. And people can supervise uh, other people. Okay. Now we loaded this data in the graph. We showed you that in the previous video. So I have my personal graph right here. Excuse me open the query browser and I have these reports to relationships by default it's limited so if I want to show you the entire database in the graph there we have it so this is the general manager and everybody should in one way or another report to that guy but as we already saw there were a few uh, errors in our database so there are a few separate clusters let's take this one as an example this is the German branch of my organization and there is a guy named Hans Zimmer and everybody is reporting directly to him but he himself is not reporting uh, to anyone he should report to me the general manager so wouldn't it be nice if I could now just go back to my FileMaker database and find this guy Hans Zimmer there he is and indeed a lot of people reporting to this guy, but he himself is not reporting to anyone. So wouldn't it be nice if I could now just point him to the president, for instance, and say, okay, reports to Joris Art. And if I now go back to my graph database and I'm refreshing this graph, unfortunately the zoom level always uh, goes up again, so I need to scroll back. There he is. This is the... CEO and as you can see now a reports to relationship has been established just simply by uh, selecting that in the drop down list in FileMaker. So how did I create this interaction between FileMaker and the graph database? Let me show you. So I already uh, showed you how it works. Now what's happening is Behind this reports to field, I have created a script trigger that runs a script update relationship. And what this script does is basically retrieving both primary key and foreign key, the reports to key. So both keys I need to refer to the person and who he is reporting to. In this case, Hans Zimmer reporting to me, Joris Arts. So I'm creating both variables. And then in the next step, I am building a cipher statement. So you see this match statement. This is what we saw in Neo4j. Okay, so I'm finding a node with this ID as a property. So I'm finding Hans Zimmer in this example. Okay, and if I find a reports to relationship from that person, referred to by the variable R, delete that relationship. So before creating a new relationship, I first make sure that the existing relationship is cleared. So in the first statement, I delete the relationship to create the new one afterwards. Okay, so this is the query I need to launch in Neo4j, but how can I launch that query from within FileMaker? Well, what I'm doing is I'm putting that query in a so-called JSON string. So that's why we need the curly brackets here. And I need to specify a query and then an empty parameters uh, um, parameter. <laughs> Wrapping that all in a variable named uh, data, string data. Uh, 
I'm building a header. So this is the header I need. What I'm doing is preparing an API call to the database. And if you have not yet looked into JSON and how to deal with APIs from FileMaker, then this is definitely a topic you should uh, learn because this is the future. This is how you can connect FileMaker to all kinds of powerful things like graph databases, for instance. So this video will not be a tutorial on how to use JSON or how to use APIs. I'm just showing you that um, what we already know, this query statement does need to be wrapped in a JSON string and we are now sending that one to uh, Neo4j API by preparing a header and by using the insert from URL command. And this is the address that my database is on. It's, it sits on my local host. This is the uh, port number I need to use. And this is the endpoint, the API endpoint to call. So here you see the header uh, completely. It's not difficult because this is all fixed text. So you just need to look it up in the documentation. Just copy paste this one in your example. This is the username and password for my Neo4j database. Okay. And this is the package or the query that resides in the uh, data variable I just created before. So I'm actually sending my query over to the Neo4j database with this header information using insert from URL with this uh, curl option. So the header is the curl option in this case. And I'm going to do that twice. Once to delete the existing relationship and then a second time to create a, a new relationship if needed. So if reports two is empty, of course, I don't need to create a new relationship. I just needed to remove the existing one, okay? Now, if I need to create a relationship, this is how the query looks like. So this is a Cypher again. Uh, you have this match statement. I'm going to look for a person since FileMaker only knows primary keys and foreign keys, I need to find the person based on ID, okay? Then I need to find the other node, uh, the reports to person, and I'm, I'm naming that one S from a supervisor, okay? And I'm building a new relationship between the first node I found, the person, and the supervisor. So this is just a regular cipher statement. Again, I'm wrapping this in a so-called JSON string putting that in a variable called data, replacing ID with the real ID. And yes, please note that I'm using uh, insert text instead of, instead of a set variable. And the reason is with insert text, I can use uh, double quotes uh, in my text, which I cannot if I use set variable, then I would need to escape all these quotes. So this is a little trick. Uh, using insert text, I can just copy and paste a JSON string uh, with the quotes. And then I use substitute to replace these placeholders with the actual variables from FileMaker. Instead of assembling a fairly complex uh, calculation using set variable. So I'm doing it in two steps using insert text and substitute to replace placeholders with the real variable names. Okay. Then I'm doing the same thing for the header. So insert text allows me just to copy and paste uh, double quotes without having to escape them uh, in the calculation engine. All right. And then I'm assembling the fixed header. So it's exactly the same header as we had before with the same username and password. And now my data string uh, will contain the second JSON package to build the relationship. And I'm using insert from uh, URL again. Sorry. Kids. So that's maybe too quickly. Insert from URL back to the same address. This is where my Neo4j database resides, local host, port number, and endpoint. Okay. So again, if you don't know how to use JSON yet, or if you're not uh, familiar with using APIs, there are plenty of tutorials on the FileMaker Custom App Academy as well as on YouTube. Uh, it's worth it. It's always the same. It's not difficult. It's just a matter of finding the basic building blocks. And so you have them right here. Um, and then just change a couple of things to, to do all kinds of uh, API uh, requests, okay? So this API is not that hard to 
use and once you know how to use cypher and how to use these queries you can do all kinds of things in your graph database from within FileMaker. okay so this is how i can now update my graph database from within FileMaker. so each time i'm changing the relationship here it is actually updated on the other side in neo4j so you even don't see it running but behind the scenes there is a script trigger uh, going on so i can just put on the debugger choose another entry and as you can see the script i just showed to you is now run uh, as the update relationship script and so with this i would like to end this video the next step in the last video will be to replace filemaker tables entirely with a graph database is that possible and what is the advantage what results can we get what benefits can we get from that so i hope to see you back in my final video uh, about filemaker as a graph front end